new things going on there. Okay. Uh, I guess you could take a product site and then there's sort of less to search for. Yeah, there, there, there is. Um, th this isn't as high on my list of like things I think are, 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 are worthwhile looking at, but, 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 but it has, I have thought about, so I'll just go ahead and try to describe it in 30 seconds or so. Um, if we, and this is, this is very much like the way Deb discovered yeah. his mod 14 conjectures. Uh, if you have, the, let's say that we have the, um, have a product side and we have the difference at a distance, congruence at a distance uh, conditions on the sum side, we're just trying to discover the initial conditions. We can just kind of like experimentally, you know, run from, you know, from n equals 1, n equals 2, x equals 3, like if we're agreeing right now, great. If there's too many, then we have to maybe throw in some initial conditions to prune out. And oops, maybe we delete so many, so backtrack and recursively run it. But you didn't do that here. You didn't uh, the, so, 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 so I have done that in some cases. That's oh. not how 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 oh. how we count it there. And in my case, it's like I've tried it, it hasn't found anything yet. Mm -hmm. But but that but that is very in spirit uh, to to the way that as uh, Deb came up with his mod fourteen uh, conjectures. Mm -hmm. uh, what else is there to say? Um, how might we go about? Verifying these. So uh, these were like experimentally uh, discovered by maybe capping out the first 30, 40, 50 terms of the sums just by running through all partitions up to n equals 50 and you know figuring and asking yourself, does it satisfy all the sums I can do? Yes or no, sort of thing. And so at some point, okay, that becomes you know too slow. You know. 50 terms is nice, you know, be nice if we could verify this for I mean, 2,000 terms, then we'd be pretty darn sure, even if it's not quite a proof. And maybe that process will uh, be trending towards a proof. So one idea that we can both verify this further and simultaneously think about how this might prove it is by looking at some sequences of polynomials where uh, with, with, with the sum side conditions and one extra condition. So uh, verification. Okay, so let me write out some recursions for I4 prime. And so just to remind you this the uh, sum side for I4 prime is uh, difference three at distance two, and if adjacent parts are within one of each other, there's some is one mod three, compared to one mod three. And so let's define the, the following uh, recur or following sequences. So, so a sub m is going to be the generating function for I4 prime sub sum sides. And with it all, with, so these two conditions plus whatever my initial condition is, uh, and all parts are at most 3m. And then I want to have three of these sequences, and they're just going to be exactly the same things, except all parts are almost 3m plus 1, all parts are almost 3m plus 2. And so if, if, if we take this as our framework, take these definitions, so this, this is a lot nicer now to calculate with because a sub, all of these a sub m's or b sub m's, c sub m, they're all going to be polynomials for, for, for a fixed set. Um, because there's a, all parts have to be at most 3m, it's not hard to, we think about for a smidge that, that you know, you can have, you know, there's some finite number of parts, you know, if your biggest part is 3m, there's some maximum number of parts you can have to that, um, based on the difference at a distance conditions. These are all polynomials. And so based off of, based off of this, we can, 
break down some uh, recursions. And so they're, they're going to look, look like this. So, so A sub M, so, so this is uh, I4 prime sum size of all parts at, at, at most 3M. Well, there's, there's two cases. Either it has the largest part that's equal to 3M or it doesn't. If it doesn't, it's counted by C sub M minus 1. And if it does have a largest part equal to 3M, then we can peel that off, and then if you think about a little bit, then we can have anything. The largest part is at most 3m minus 2. That corresponds to the, the bm minus 1. That, that, that all works out. There are also a couple of similar uh, recurrences that we can write down. to the 3m plus 1. So what's, I, I won't go through all the details, but it goes through much, you know, this is one of those things you just have to sit down and think about yourself to figure out what's going on. But it's like either we peel off the largest part, either there is no, you know, the, the largest part, the principal part does not appear, and that's these terms, or it does appear, like down here appears once or appears twice, okay, and that due to some stuff, there's usually one kind of tricky one, we have to do a lot of inclusion exclusion going on there to figure out well, what, what could happen. But like these are the recurrences that we can have. Uh, and so if we we can turn this into some very nice uh, matrix, we have to kind of stop, uh, rearrange stuff a smidge. track of those initial conditions over there. And so once you have this, you can feed this into maple and calculate it out. Lots and lots of terms because these the sequence of these, I haven't said this yet, then I probably now is a good time to do that, is that these polynomials are going to converge to our to, to, to the overall sum side. Uh, we, we, we keep pushing the or the maximum part larger and larger and larger, so, so, so things converge. And so this allows us, uh, there's another trick or two that you can do, and, and at which point you can easily get 2,000 terms of, of this if, if you want to verify it. Which at that point, okay, we're, we're pretty convinced that it's true even though we haven't proved it yet. So, so now's about time to, to observe. I'm, uh, both, so, so there's kind of three things in this part of the talk, verification, how one might prove it, and how can we expand on things to, you know, maybe discover more things. So, 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 so here's one idea that, that, I, that I've had running around my head, haven't quite uh, sat down to implement yet, and if, if anybody's out there who would like to talk to me about that, I'd, I'd be very happy to talk with you. Um, well, what happens if, if we kind of re rethink about the discovery process? Like, uh, let's say that we have some sort of difference at a distance condition and congruence at a distance condition. You know, put those, those together here. So, 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 so we basically just translate those two conditions way up there 
they translate exactly into this matrix right here. And then it's the initial condition you know, that feed in these three polynomials here. Well, you could, you could perhaps try to come up with, you know, cook up some, whatever your initial, or whatever your sum side restrictions are, write down this matrix, fill, you know, guess what initial conditions might, you know, I, you, know you just have to make this up on the spot sort of thing, but you know, use some imagination to guess, guess that, and calculate out a bunch of terms and see if it turns into some sort of product. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Uh, so, but, so what you're really interested in then is the product of all these matrices, mm -hmm. right? Right, 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 right. yeah. So, so, did you try cleaning it up before, like to try to diagonalize it or make it into an upper triangular matrix? I, I, clean it up before you start taking products. I, 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 I tried some, I wasn't successful, but perhaps that's something that deserves a, 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 a second or third thought. So I, I, I will certainly uh, keep that in mind. It's one, it doesn't feel like there, there is anything, but, but I, I could very well be wrong again, so I, uh, that is on the two two list. So, so, so yeah, we, we can think about, you know, experimentally trying to find new identities this way, and then, you know, I don't know how you guess that stuff, but if you get lucky, if you find a single new identity, that's a really exciting break. You know, try many things, find one thing, that's a pretty good uh, success rate, and, um, then all you have to do is interpret the initial conditions and, 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 and you're good to go. So that's one, one, one thing to think about. Let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Um, we can also use uh, this sort of, so this is now shifting gears, um, how might we prove this sort of stuff? Um, we can also uh, try to think about, you know, it would be wonderful if we could find an explicit uh, formula for uh, one of these, you know, pit, pit, you know, fill in the blank, and, and, and any one of those. Um, like if you subtract the second row from the third row in that matrix, okay. right, it gets a lot cleaner. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. It's just Using a different variable. So okay. The use. And C. Would you then have to perform a similar subtract the second column and the third column to account for the fact that you're not really. Now you're not calculating out A and B and C M, you're calculating out A and B and C M minus B M. Mm -hmm. yeah, then you have to express that in terms of. The differences on the one side, mm -hmm. yeah, which are not so nice. But 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 these are all. I I, I, I very much like you know a little, little bit of experimentation during the seminar. How about that? <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, you know, let's let, let's move on. But but this is certainly stuff I'd be happy to, to talk about to people with with, with after the talk. Um, let's see. Uh, Okay, I, I said I was going to do one thing, I changed my mind, I want to do something else real fast, because this is, this is a kind of mind-blowing thing, how does one account for this, how does one look for identities of this form, and so this is something, uh, once again, uh, George, George Andrews uh, took me off to. Uh, this will be a, a uh, good, good two, not one, but, but two different ways that we can think about generalizing the search that we have have here. Um, so let's do some further work. Uh, more interval conditions. Okay, so there's a theorem of the components that dates back to uh, 1967. So here the product side is congruent to 2 to 5 to 11 mod 12. The sum side is. So there is a, uh, a different six condition here. So adjacent parts have to be at least six apart. However, if either of the parts 
is um, congruent to, if there's a strict inequality here, if either part is congruent to 0, 1, or 3, mod 6. This so, is, I'm sorry? Lambda i plus 1 on the top of the curve. Uh, and, uh, oh, oops, yeah, sorry, 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 thank you very much. Yeah, that looks a lot more normal. It would be something if somebody would be suddenly do uh, distance six identities, that would be something. But yeah, so, so adjacent parts have to be at least six apart, and it's a strict inequality, so, so I can't have six plus 12, I can't have uh, seven plus 13, I can't have that in my partition. Um, and so, we, we should see, you know, like this is a new sort of thing that, you know, that this would be a fun sum side to think about, but how does one do this in a safe, you know, like all of a sudden we're thinking about subsets again, and we already said subsets tend to grow very, very low, or, you know, it's not quite as easy as you know, other previous things. So is there a way to do this cleverly or quickly or stuff like that? Something to think about. But the bigger uh, point that I think is kind of cool, um, is there is a friend for this one, and so maybe I should have mentioned this earlier in the talk, because this was, this was the identity that really kind of reshaped uh, my view of this when Jordana showed it to me, so it's due to him and Krishna Alati. So the product size, so this is a friend to this one, so, the, so 2, 5, 11, so this should be 1, and 7, and 10, and sure enough it is. And so then the sum side is going to be lambda i minus lambda i plus 1 is this. Same thing if, uh, and then we get this strict inequality if, if parts are congruent to 0, 3, and 5 mod 6. So some nice symmetry there. And here is a kind of really, really, really interesting thing. So, so that's a very nice idea. And what was, what's the initial conditions? And so if you try to use this sort of forbid some set of subpartitions, it turns out you, you won't find it because the one exception is that the part of the subpartition 6 plus 1 is allowed to appear. So, so, so this is forbidden by the rest of the sum side conditions. And, and instead of having you know, all, all of these over here, the, the initial condition, OK, we, we have too many, or sum size counting too many. We have to prune out a couple to make them catch up. Here we are counting enough. We have to throw in a few extra, which this feels very unnatural, but it's a true theorem. Um, and so. I've been thinking, you know, how, how do we turn this into, how, 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 how can we account for this? Maybe this sort of matrix approach will be able to guide us toward finding that. Maybe we can just, for, for a cell computer, look, you know, add in small, small sets of, of, you know, just change this, this word here to allow some set of set partitions. I don't know. But so that, that's just you one extra partition of seven. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so, so six plus one is allowed to appear, and like you know, twenty plus six plus one is allowed to appear. You know, for so, so it's allowed to appear. Right. Six plus one with, with possibly other stuff. Right. But what if the configuration six plus one is replaced by seven or five plus two? Well, so so so, so, so that would change change things because. Uh, for, for, for example, like, like let's just go to, you know, let's go, go, go to seven sort of thing. Like that six, plus, you know, seven and si you know, seven and six are the two current biggest parts, and those are going to interact in different ways okay. with, with the larger part. So, so it has to be like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. so then the sum side part of that equality, that's the same as just doing, eliminating the except part and making it the sum of the, of the, the um, partitions are holding back for n, and the partitions are holding back for n minus one. Right? Yeah. yeah. You have to be yeah. careful. Yeah. And 
I am out of time, so while I wrap this up here, so thank you all for coming in. I can talk afterwards if people want to. So thank you all. And you can't you can't adapt that proof to prove some of your conjectures. It, it's 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 hard. Oh uh, yeah, it, it, you can adapt. Uh, it, it is.